Tonight on SUTV News, the flu season is among us and how doctors are pushing for more to receive the annual shot. A new epidemic is rising among teens, how the FDA is cracking down on a new trend. All that and more, right now. Thanks for joining us on SUTV News. I'm Patrick Ramsdale. And I'm Jordan Hanley. The concept of jeweling has become a hot trend for many teens, so much that the FDA has declared teen jeweling to be an epidemic. SUTV's Delena Burrell has more. The FDA has called the use of e-cigarettes and tobacco-style vape pens an epidemic among teenagers. I believe that high school students will stop vaping when they get into college because they'll be so focused on pursuing their college career and going to class. So vaping won't be something that's on their mind to constantly do. So I do believe that as they transition into college that the vaping will stop. This chart illustrates Jewel is coming off a stellar year, especially when compared to its competitors. The e-cigarette firm has increased its revenue by over 700% from last year. Warning letters have been sent to over 1,300 retailers who have been selling electronic cigarettes illegally to underage kids. For more information, visit SUTVNews.com. Flu season is about to hit its peak, so it's safe to say you should probably get your flu shot soon. Getting the shot dramatically reduces your chances of getting the flu and spreading it to others. According to the Center for Disease Control, flu vaccines prevented over 5 million influenza illnesses. Flu vaccinations have reduced the risk of flu-related doctor visits by over 40%. Flu vaccinations have prevented intensive care visits for children by 74%. For your own protection and for the protection of those around you, you can get immunized at any drugstore, urgent care, or a doctor's office. Shippensburg is host to many bars, but none quite like the Harbor, on 55 West King Street. The Harbor is a place that allows people to hang out without the influences or temptations of alcohol. Activities include an array of games, coffee, and just enjoying human company. Other special events include karaoke, comedy night, and dancing classes. It's also home to groups like Alcoholics Anonymous and Weight Watchers. The Harbor is open Friday and Saturday evenings from 5 p.m. until midnight. An old program becomes a new college. SUTV's Allison Klein tells us more. This past Sunday, September 30th, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony outside of the Honors Office building. They were commemorating the transition from an honors program to an honors college. When talking to Rachel Smith last week, she said that it took them over 10 years for them to reach this goal. They officially got the go-ahead this year to be called a college instead of a program. Dr. Klein talked at this ceremony, introducing other speakers, including Dr. Senecal. And I have this observation to make. This is where public education is working. The standards of intellectual pursuits the emphasis on engagement with the community, and the opportunities to utilize our talents to the best of our abilities makes this town, this university, this state, this country, and this world a better place. After everyone has spoken, they cut the ribbon. Now they are officially called the Wood Honors College. The Honors College will continually serve the town of Shippensburg with upcoming service events. Students from the Wood Honors College have worked towards honors research in initiatives. Michael Smith has more. Imagine you weren't able to move your arms, or something as simple as feeding yourself was an uphill battle. Well, student researchers from Wisconsin Stout University have been working to make that problem a thing of the past. The Autonomous Meal Assistant robot was created with the goal of helping people with disabilities to be able to feed themselves using simple voice commands. We sat down with one researcher, Derek Belsky, at the Wood Honors College to hear why he believes his project is so important. It's, it's important because people that are disabled from the neck down don't have, have a lot of trouble with these uh, activities of daily living, and essentially our project was to help them with that activity, and a common activity of daily living is, is uh, 
eating, so we were trying to hit that one. Michael Smith, SUTV News. For more information, visit SUTVnews.com. You'll find plenty of flowers around Shippensburg's campus, but none quite like the ones outside Lackhove Hall. These flowers were planted for the Tulip Planting Ceremony, an event held every year to bring awareness about domestic violence. Each tulip is a symbol of a survivor or loved one who fell victim to abuse. Many students gathered to share their support, including Violence Awareness Club member Gabby Ganias, who is happy to see everyone spreading the cause. We would love to bring awareness to Shippensburg University because we think it's a very important topic for everyone to know about. And I am extremely happy that we get to, in October, bring awareness to campus. The tulips will bloom in spring, but you can see some paper ones hung up in the Women's Center. SU announces new housing rules earlier this week. Beginning with this year's first year students, only those with a minimum 3.2 GPA or at least 60 credits will be able to move off campus in fall of 2019. The change has SHIP joining six other state schools such as Kutztown and Lockhaven in having a two-year on-campus living requirements. Be sure to stay tuned to SUTV in the coming weeks as the story develops. Many students must balance part-time jobs and schoolwork during the academic year, but are, they, but are they able to manage their time so that their job does not affect their schoolwork? According to a survey conducted on campus, on average freshmen work 15 hours a week, sophomores work 10 hours a week, juniors working 20 hours a week, and seniors only working 10 hours a week. But when it comes to studying, juniors seem to spend a significantly greater number of hours studying per week compared to the other undergraduate students. Juniors also work more hours than other years. The survey also suggested that juniors are on average more stressed than other years when it comes to balancing with their schoolwork and their, um, I'm sorry, their schoolwork and their work schedule. With, uh, with midterms and exams and the holiday season around the corner, stresses on campus from managing a part-time job and schoolwork can only go up from here. For more information about the survey and managing a part-time job, visit SUTVnews.com. Do sleep and weight gain have a correlation? SUTV's Brianne, Brianna Brown talks to other Shippensburg students about their experiences. Studies show that lack of sleep increases weight gain. We spoke with two Shippensburg seniors who offered their opinion. I've been here for four years. Um, even though I didn't gain any weight and stayed the same, um, I did experience different time periods where I slept more than others. So I would say senior year I slept the most. I actually don't think there's any correlation because I feel like my, well, at least for my waking, I think it just came from being inactive and eating the same amount that I was when I was like, when I had a fast metabolism, a faster metabolism. The average Shippensburg University student typically goes to sleep around 12 a.m. For SUTV, this is Brianna Brown. For more information and statistics, visit SUTVnews.com. Time Magazine's latest cover brings together the face of Christine Blase Ford with her testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee last week. Ford described to senators how she says Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were in high school. Kavanaugh denies the allegation. The illustration is composed of words and phrases Ford used during the testimony. Artist John Mavraudis drew each letter by hand. He placed the words in symbolically significant locations in the illustration. Quotes about Ford's memories were placed on her forehead. Quotes about wanting help were placed on her hands. Salmonella could be lurking in your fridge. There are two massive nationwide recalls on beef and eggs due to contamination. CNN's Kim Hutcherson has more. More than six and a half million pounds of beef products distributed by Arizona-based producer JBS Tolson are being recalled. At least 57 cases of salmonella illness are linked to this outbreak in 16 states, according to the USDA. The recalled products were packaged between July 26th and September 7th and were sold under the brand names Walmart, Cedar River Farms Natural Beef, Showcase, Showcase Walmart, and JBS Generic. All have the USDA inspection mark EST-267. 
Meantime, Gravel Ridge Farms in Alabama is recalling its cage-free large eggs after 38 people in seven states got sick from salmonella. The eggs in question were packaged in one dozen and two and a half dozen cardboard containers and sold primarily in grocery stores in Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia, with best if used by dates of July 25th to October 3rd. Health officials say make sure you cook all ground beef to an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a food thermometer to make sure it's cooked. And when it comes to eggs, they're cooked when the yolks and white are firm. Avoid foods that contain raw or lightly cooked eggs. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Some football fans in Pennsylvania are questioning state police after its choppers sent PSU tailgating tents flying. Police say fans were, quote, getting out of hand outside Beaver Stadium Saturday and refused to leave. So they sent a state helicopter to command people to leave. You see the chopper fly low above the crowd. It then turns and flies even lower, launching tent poles, tarps, and debris flying through the air. One fan said a girl's face was cut by some debris. State police said, quote, all other warnings on the ground were ignored. It said, quote, the helicopter was deployed as another tool to compel the group to disperse and curb dangerous and unruly behavior. When we come back in world news, a Saudi Arabian journalist goes missing. We tell you more after the break. The North Korean government tries and steals billions of dollars. SGTV's Matt Kleindens has this week's world news. Matt? Tensions continue to rise between the United States and China after another close encounter in the disputed South China Sea. The USS Decanter came within 45 yards of a head-on collision with a Chinese warship on Sunday. The guided missile destroyer was conducting a freedom of navigation operation near the Spratly Islands where the Chinese ship approached. The U.S. Navy says the Chinese warship conducted a series of aggressive maneuvers while warning the U.S. ship to leave the area. China's government says the U.S. presence in the area is a threat to Chinese sovereignty. A Chinese defense spokesperson released a statement today saying, the Chinese military will resolutely perform its defense duties and continue to take all necessary measures to safeguard our sovereignty and regional peace and stability. A new report from a cybersecurity watchdog alleges the North Korean government tried to steal over $1 billion and particularly aggressive attacks on global banks. The report says the hackers conducted financial crimes on behalf of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The report from FireEye says the group called APT38 has conducted operations in at least 16 organizations in at least 11 countries. The report also states that a probable number of institutions targeted by the group is likely higher and it has successfully stolen over $100 million through its operations since 2014. Pyongyang's increasingly bold attacks in the virtual space have come in tandem with the Hermit Nation's rapidly progressing mis ballistic missile and nuclear programs. Those operations have continued despite ongoing diplomatic talks with the U.S. and South Korea. A prominent Saudi Arabian columnist has disappeared after entering a Saudi consulate in Istanbul on Tuesday. Jamal Khashoggi recently criticized the Saudi authorities for being heavily heavy-handed in dealing with people opposing the regime. Khashoggi went to the consulate to pick up paperwork for his upcoming marriage. He was last seen entering the building, but officials inside said he exited the building after retrieving the paperwork. Turkish police have reportedly examined the surveillance footage from the area and said there was no sign of Khashoggi leaving the consulate. And finally tonight, First Lady Melania Trump is in Mal Malawi on her first international solo trip. Thursday, she spent time with students from the Chipla Primary School, where she donated supplies and soccer balls. Mrs. Trump called her first visit to the school an amazing experience. She's also expected to visit Kenya and Egypt this week while promoting women's and children's health. President Trump tweeted this morning about the trip, saying, Our country's great first lady, Melania, is doing really well in Africa. The people love her, and she loves them. It's a beautiful thing to see. That's it for World News this week. Let's send it back to Patrick and Jordy at the desk. Now let's send it over to the Slate's Michaela Valonio for this week's Slate Preview. Michaela. Coming up next week in the Slate, we will cover the Life as Jamie Knows It, an Exceptional Child Grows Up lecture, and the Red Raider football game against Long Island University. Other stories include Chippensburg University's tulip planting ceremony and student presentations at the EAPSU conference on campus, as well as the Slate's reaction to the vandalism that happened to the safe office door. Be sure to pick up the next edition of the Slate Tuesday in newsstands around you. When we come back in entertainment, a famous rapper turned herself in Monday morning. And Marley tells us what to expect for this Saturday's game day. 
Patrick, today I was walking home from the library in a monsoon and it was just absolutely miserable. Well, let's send it over to Marley to see what we have in store next week. Unfortunately, the rain here isn't stopping anytime soon. Today we can expect an average temperature of 54 and scattered thunderstorms. Tomorrow we can expect a high of 71 and a low of 60 and it will be mostly sunny. Now let's take a look at our five day. For Saturday and Sunday, we will have temperatures ranging from the mid 60s to the low 70s with some rain on Sunday. Monday, we can expect some thunderstorms and our high will be 81 with a low of 65. Tuesday and Wednesday will both be partly cloudy with lows of in the 60s and highs in the 70s. Hopefully the rainy weather will start clearing up by next week. That's all I have. Back to you guys. Cardi B is making headlines not for her music, but for her arrest. The rapper turned herself in to New York City police Monday morning following an incident at a strip club back in August. Cardi apparently ordered her group to attack two of the club's bartenders after rumors spread about one of them being involved with her husband, Offset. Chairs and bottles were allegedly thrown and two bartenders were in need of medical attention when it was over. Cardi says she had nothing to do with the attack and she expects the matter to be handled quickly. Her court date is set for October 29th. Kingsman actor Taryn Egerton is best known for saving the world while dressed in a suit. But what about singing while wearing oversized sunglasses? In the up-and-coming film Rocket Man, Egerton is set to portray musical legend Elton John. The first trailer was posted on Monday this week and showed how the film is reimagined a documentary of Elton's journey to stardom. With the fitting tagline, based on a true fantasy, many are excited for the movie to hit theaters this summer. This is also not the first time Elton and Egerton have worked together. Back in 2017, they co-starred alongside each other in Kingsman 2, The Golden Circle. This is just one of many reasons critics think Egerton will have no problem pulling off the role of the iconic Elton John. The black flame candle has been lit once more, meaning only one thing, the Sanderson sisters are back. This teaser promo for a sequel to the classic 1993 Disney film Hocus Pocus was released on Tuesday and immediately spurred excitement. Fans everywhere shared at the picture and spread the news as rumors for a Hocus Pocus continuation have been circling for years. In the past, some of the original cast members had even discussed an interest in doing another movie. But certain questions remain unanswered. Will the movie be a remake or a sequel? And will the original actors be cast as their same roles or not at all? Some are even convinced the promo is not real. No premiere date has been mentioned and only a small amount of information has been released. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if the rumors are true or if it's a bunch of hocus pocus. Actor and TV host Jonathan Bennett is painting our kitchens pink. Yesterday, he released his new Burn Cookbook, solely based off the infamous Burn book from the 2004 hit movie Mean Girls. Bennett played the part of Aaron Samuels in the film. He made sure the, res the recipes would bring out everyone's inner plastic. The book is not intended for professional chefs, nor those lacking in Mean Girls movie trivia. Nearly every dish has a name based on a reference from the movie, including Fetch a Cheney Alfredo, Gretchen's Wieners, and You Go Glen Hot Cocoa. The book also includes a do-it-yourself beauty mask, workouts, quizzes, and memories from the cast members. Now newly available for purchase, Bennett hopes the cookbook will allow fans to relive the movie and get plenty of Mean Girls movie quotes stuck in your head. When holding a fundraiser, most people would set up a bake sale or sell buttons, but one ship student decided to take it a step further. Taryn Swartz will be hosting what she calls a Burnt Toast Comedy Night, a event to help raise money for her homecoming campaign. Friends and strangers are all invited to come sit, laugh for the main event, Roast Taryn. People are going to tell jokes and stories about all the random things that I have done recently, not so recently. I'm having my friends from home record videos so I can play them. It should be really, really funny. She expressed her ability to easily take on criticism and hopes many will attend as all the money will be donated to a food security program. The roasting will begin at 7 p.m. on October 10th in the Cub NPR. Admission is $4, jokes are one, but laughter is free. That's all for entertainment this week. Back to you guys at the desk. When we come back in sports, men's soccer gets national attention. And Highgate's Fieldhouse has an impressive new feature.
Championship Volleyball suffers a tough loss against Pitt Johnstown. Zach Kelly has the highlights. Ship came out strong in their PSAC Central opener against Pitt Johnstown on Tuesday. Morgan DeFloria had yet another strong set of kills for the Raiders. The Mountain Cats began a comeback, winning the second and third set. The Raiders took Pitt Johnstown to the very last set, but eventually fell 13 to 15. Ship loses two sets to three. For SUTV Sports, I'm Zach Kelly. Volleyball's next game is tomorrow at home at Westchester against Westchester. Men's soccer won their fourth consecutive PSAC matchup Wednesday as they hosted the Bloomsburg Huskies. Senior Cole Kropnick scored his PSAC leading 10th goal season, this season from amazing pass from senior Devin Meddy. Ship would go on to beat Bloomsburg 2-1 after Kropnick's assist to senior Patrick Lubin found the back of the net in the second half. Shippensburg is currently receiving votes in the United Soccer Coaches Division II rankings and maintains second place in the PSAC, just six points behind Gannon. Ship looks to stay hot as they travel to Pitt Johnstown this Saturday. Kickoff is at 12. The Red Raiders return home this Saturday to play LIU Post after a tough stretch of away games, ready to prove themselves to their fans. Uh, it's great to be back home. I know me and the rest of the team, we love, we love home games. The atmosphere is crazy. The fans here are supporting, and we're just ready to get back and um, prove ourselves back, our first game back home. Kickoff kick is at 1 with SUTV providing live coverage of the game. Notice anything different at Haggis Fieldhouse? SUTV's Jake Rahm checked out what changes were made this summer. Over the summer, construction took place in Haggis Fieldhouse for a brand new basketball court in urethane surface. The $700,000 project started after graduation in the spring and took all summer to complete. The new basketball floor is now level with the urethane surface and does not have to be taken out at any time. From a manpower standpoint, you know, it's just like taking, it took a lot of effort to take that wood floor up and down and, and uh, it impacts the use of the space, you know, now that we have it level uh, and we're, and we're get purchasing a cover to go over it like most, you know, so if you want to have an event, you roll the cover out, you can have the event on top of the floor. Not only does the brand new gym floor benefit the basketball and volleyball teams, but the urethane surface going around the gym floor might benefit the track team by being able to use their track spikes. Yeah, that's, a, that's an internal decision. There was two different surfaces that we could go with. One was considered a, a spikeable surface um, that it's, it's it, um, the way it, if you go down there and poke a hole in it and it'll close back up if the hole's not too big. So uh, th that remains to be seen as far as, you know, how it actually holds up to, to spikes. I had a chance to talk with head coach of the track and field team, Dave Osanich, and Osanich said they were given the okay to have track spikes on the indoor surface. However, Osanich wants to test out the new track surface before having the whole team in here. From Haggis Fieldhouse, I'm Jake Rahm, SUTV Sports. Let's send it back to the studio with Avery Quinn. That's it for sports. Let's send it back to the desk. Feels like every week we talk about another fast food restaurant. But this week, a fast food chain creates an interesting coating for their food. We'll tell you more when we come back. Fans of New Orleans-style fast food chain Popeyes might say their fried, ch fried chicken is as good as gold. But on Thursday, the restaurant is offering poultry that is literally golden. Six boneless wings dunked in champagne and slathered with 24 karat gold batter. Like the precious metal itself, the golden chicken is not easy to come by. It's only available for a single day and only in four locations. These locations are Anaheim, California, and Elizabeth, New Jersey, New York City, and New Orleans. As far as golden products go, the price is a bargain, just five bucks, including a biscuit and a side dish. Popeye says the battered bird might become available in more locations in the future if demand is high. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Jordan Hanley. And I'm Patrick Ramsdale. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SUTV News. And check out our website, SUTVNews.com. We'll see you next week.